Good morning and welcome to uh, Brockton City Hall. I appreciate the great turnout we've got today for the city's uh, recognition and celebration of Recovery Month today. The month of September is Recovery Month and uh, we are supporting people in recovery, supporting the families of people in recovery, and helping to assist others to get into recovery. And I think we're here for all of those reasons today. Uh, we do have uh, several distinguished guests. Uh, the Plymouth County District Attorney, Tim Cruz, is here with us today. And also the founder of Learn to Cope, Joanne Peterson, is here today, wherever Joanne is, right over there. We also have a couple members of our state legislative delegation. They'll be up to speak to you in just a moment. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, open the program with the recognition of the clothesline t-shirt project that you see hanging above you. Uh, I think that we displayed last year's for the first time here in City Hall, and uh, I am just really intrigued and moved by this t-shirt project, uh, the way that it gives people in recovery a way to express themselves and to send a message, because sometimes that's really hard to do. We're still overcoming stigma, and uh, we're still overcoming barriers, so I think that uh, for folks in recovery to be able to help strengthen their own recovery by being able to communicate like this, but also to get the rest of us to think a little bit about some of the messages that are up there is, is just really critical. So uh, this, is, this project is from Stairway to Recovery, one of our great partners in the Champion Plan, and I'd like to invite up Samuel and Domingos to come up and just give us a few words on the T-shirt project. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, the project started like three years ago with uh, two females, members from the center, Crystal and Tina. And uh, they wanted to express something to the community, as the major says, you know, sometimes we want to send a message and it's hard to send it to the people. So uh, these two females came with the idea of making shirts to express our feelings and emotions for the people to see it, that there is a hope for people on the outside and a message for the community to stick together. And that's what we did. Uh, she came, or they came, and uh, we got uh, many people, so the uh, members of the center together, and we made the project for you guys to uh, see it. Um, I was part of, uh, part of them, and I'm uh, grateful and proud that this message through this uh, shirt has touched many people. Um, we exposed this in Ohio also, we went to Ohio and we brought the uh, project and the t-shirts. And uh, it touched a lot of people, you know, because our message has to be conveyed in different ways. It's not only by talking, but also by see something that it brings the attention of somebody. Catch that moment for people to see that it's not only a bunch of people at the center that we're wasting our time, but uh, many people together try to do a change for the community. So that's how the project is started. Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to thank you, the mayor, and everyone who's here. This project, uh, every shirt up there is a life. Uh, it's the struggle, the pain, suffering, the tears that we, uh, in our recovery, have, have put on this work. Uh, it means uh, uh, all the hopes, disappointments, and, and dreams that we have. Every shirt up there is, is a brother or sister. Uh, that um, Some of them are here, some of them are not. Um, when I came to uh, Brockton, I was struggling in my own recovery. Um, Stairway gave me the chance and opportunity not only to work on my recovery, but uh, to meet uh, my, my co-peers, we become a family. I, I'm grateful for Stairway on my brothers and stay away and the mayor for it. And all these organizations who are here and supporting uh, us and supporting uh, the community. Thank you, everyone. Uh, 
Well, thank you. So I hope while you're here spending some time with us at City Hall this morning and visiting the resource tables, please please take some time to really uh, read some of the t-shirts up there. Some of them are very powerful messages. Uh, we've, as, as we as a city take on this challenge of uh, fighting the opioid addiction crisis and all types of addiction, uh, we would not be able to wage this battle if we did not have the support of our legislators up on Beacon Hill, who not only file legislation but help us to obtain state funding. So I'm very uh, pleased and proud that a couple members of our delegation are here uh, to mark this uh, September Recovery Month with us. I'd like to give them each an opportunity to say a few words. So uh, Representative Jerry Cassidy is here with us. Jerry, come on up. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I just want to thank the uh, Gandera uh, Center for inviting us. Uh, we were at the uh, Recovery Home Collaborative the other day at Florian Hall, and a uh, true champion that doesn't that goes unnoticed is Corin uh, uh, Capiello. Thank you very much for everything you do. We're, we're, uh, one of my first votes. One of my first votes was the opioid uh, uh, law that we'd signed uh, 2016, and uh, it was uh, it was a pleasure to uh, see that uh, Chairman Dempsey at the time put an awful lot of money back into our recovery systems, and uh, I can see it right here, just trickling down to you know the the city of Brockton, and uh, I was looking at one of the uh, shirts. There is no person walking the face of the earth who demonstrates more courage, dignity, honesty, and integrity on a daily basis. And that just hit home to me. Um, you know, everybody here, it's not just the, uh, the, the people who are recovering, it's the families that are uh, hurt by this. And, uh, you know, I just uh, want to thank you very much for inviting me and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. So we're also very pleased to have with us today a state representative and uh, chair of the House Judiciary Committee, Claire Cronin. Good morning. It's my great pleasure to be here with you today. I guess the first thing I would like to say is you are not alone. Uh, this fight is a fight that we all take on. I look around the room, I say, well, first uh, to the mayor, who has been ahead of the curve for municipalities and all that we have done here in the city of Brockton. The Champion Plan, it's a model for every municipality. And it's working, and it's working well. We have all the citizens out here who take this on. Some of you have suffered, but you've taken your pain and suffering and turned it to help those who come behind you. I know John Green. Uh, who lives in Easton. He, he and his wife have a wonderful program, No First Time. They came to the State House as a result of their presentation at the State House. They got, I think, somewhere between 8 and 14 high schools, reps from other areas of the state who saw what they had to offer and said, come and speak to our high school too. Thanks, John. You are a true champion. Joanne Peterson, probably the first to really make this public and try to remove the stigma that many families who have suffered in silence. You were a, a trailblazer on this issue before people were talking about it, before it was in the forefront. You continue to do so. Thank you for your work. To all of the other organizations that are here, Stairway to Heaven, the Gandara, you know, we had the pleasure of uh, joining you at the Recovery uh, Homes Luncheon last Thursday. Thank you for the work you do every single day in our community. I have to mention the other places we have in Brockton, High Point. Uh, Corin, I know, uh, worked there for years. My, my sister worked there as well. Uh, but the work that these people do every day on a daily basis to help this problem cannot go on unnoticed because you are on the front lines and you are the ones that are making a difference every day. As we move forward in the legislature, I'm sure you re read in the papers that there is a big push on Beacon Hill for criminal justice reform. As part of that reform, we have to make sure that the first step for those who are suffering from addiction is not jail, that it's treatment. And so as we move forward, 
pay attention to what's going on in the paper, pay attention to what's going on in Beacon Hill, because we are working to make sure that the families and people who need treatment have access to treatment, and we are pushing for treatment and not incarceration for those who are addicted. Uh, so I stand before you today. Uh, our door is always open. Uh, Representative Cassidy and I sit right next to each other uh, in the uh, chamber of the House. Uh, we are here every day for you. Uh, we work together with our, our district attorney, the Senate. Senator Mike Brady has just joined us today, the mayor, but this is something we are all in together. Uh, so I thank you. I've gone on a little too long, uh, but thank you for all that you are doing. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Representative Cronin, and uh, we just want to make sure everyone recognizes that uh, Senator Mike Brady, the Dean of our Legislative Delegation, is also uh, here with us this morning showing his support. So, Mike, thank you so much for being here. Um, I do have a proclamation to issue, but uh, just a few brief comments of my own. We, uh, our administration came into office about three and a half years ago, and when I ran for mayor and when I ran for school committee before that, you know, I made it clear that a priority of ours would be uh, to recognize and try to figure out as a city how we begin to address uh, the challenge of the, not just the opiate addiction crisis, but all types of substance abuse disorders and what role can a municipality take in helping families and helping individuals and uh, healing our city. And so when we first, as I think about recovery month, in our first month we asked our police officers and firefighters to carry Narcan, Naloxone. And we were the first city that had all first responders, police, fire, and EMS, all carrying Narcan. And unfortunately, our first responders are doing over 1,000 Narcan saves a year over a thousand Narcan saves a year. And those are just the ones being done by our first responders. That doesn't even include other folks who are using uh, naloxone also. Um, and, but it's, I think that's an important part of recovery because for some folks, that might be the moment that gets them to the point where they're ready to uh, really seek and achieve recovery. And I, the one thing I know for sure is that if we allow someone to die, they'll never have another chance at recovery. And every one of those Narcan saves represents another opportunity for recovery for that person. And I personally know many people who have had Narcan saves that are clean today, and they would not be alive if it weren't for our first responders first. So you've got to be alive to be able to get another opportunity at recovery. And I, I think that that's been critically important. The city is also an employer. So as an employer, uh, I, I'm very proud of a couple of the things we've achieved this year. Uh, this year we negotiated, and the key word is negotiated, uh, with our firefighters union a uh, substance abuse policy. And it's a policy that is built on the safety of the firefighters, but it's a policy that's built around uh, assistance and compassion and helping not just our employees, but the families of our employees if we've got somebody that's struggling. And just like years ago when I was advocating for teenagers struggling with recovery, and at one time the answer was just always to kick the kid out of school, and all that did was make things worse, not better. It's the same with our employees. Just firing somebody is not the answer. It's not the answer for them. It's not the answer for their family. The answer is to hopefully be able to identify our people that need some assistance as early as we can, get them into treatment as fast as we can, and give them an opportunity to get healthy again so they can return to work, keep their families together, and continue to support their families. And so that's what that drug policy is built around, and uh, we're hoping to have a very similar policy ratified very soon by our Police Patrolmen's Association. And I received some criticism from the local newspaper because they thought the drug policy wasn't tough enough. The problem is they just don't understand what the purpose of the drug policy is. 
The purpose is to help people, not to fire people. It does have provisions that if after several attempts at recovery, a person can be terminated, but not until after we've done everything we can to try to help them and their family. Uh, recently on July 1st, I guess one of the ongoing issues in the recovery world or in the treatment world as we address this crisis is medically assisted treatment. And I know that not all of us are on board with that yet. Uh, however, I don't think there's any question that a lot of people are walking around leading normal lives today because they benefit from medically assisted treatment. And so on July 1st, we changed our Blue Cross health insurance plan for city employees to cover the cost of medically assisted treatment. It's not cheap, it's gonna cost us some money, but we wanna be a leader, an example to other employers that this is an illness, this is a medical treatment, it's a public health issue, and we're not gonna beat it if we're not willing to support people who are trying. And so as of July 1st, the city health insurance now covers medically assisted treatment, not just for our employees, but their dependents also. So think of all the families times the number of employees, and there are a lot of folks that today have coverage for medically assisted treatment that did not have it a few months ago. And I think everyone in this room is pretty familiar with the Champion Plan, so I won't give you a long talk on the Champion Plan. Um, but the fact of the matter is, we started about a year and a half ago. It's our version of police-assisted recovery. Uh, folks walk into the police station, and just by asking for help, our champion plan, Stairway to Recovery volunteers are there within 15, 20 minutes, and to offer their assistance to get the person out of the police station into a safe haven and ultimately into treatment. And amazingly, and I've experienced this in my own life with my own family, I think everyone has stories of people that were willing to go into treatment and couldn't get into treatment fast enough. And families that spent a week or two weeks trying to get a bed somewhere, and by the time they get it, their loved one that was willing to go isn't willing to go anymore and they missed an opportunity. Because we know that that opportunity, when a person gets that moment of clarity, that they can see through the fog and realize that they are ready to step forward and get some help, that we have to be able to respond quickly. And the champion plan is placing people in treatment on average, on average, in less than two hours, which to me is just impossible, but they're doing it. And there's a lot of things that differentiate the Champion Plan, our recovery coaches, the fact that we speak multiple languages. Um, but I do want to share with you that in about a year and a half, as of this weekend, the Champion Plan has now done over 700 placements into treatment in a year and a half. So I do truly appreciate the support of all of the organizations you see here. Uh, I hope people stop by and visit all of the resource tables. Everyone in this room is a partner. We're working together. We're collaborating together to come at this thing from every angle that we possibly can. And I truly appreciate everyone being here. I do have a proclamation to issue today because that's something th they let me do around here. Um, so, uh, Corn, how would we just want to invite Stairway to Recovery, just people in recovery in general? Or, well, how many do you want me to do it? People in recovery? Okay. Okay, gotcha. So what I'd like to do as I issue this proclamation, uh, our city's recognition of Recovery Month, uh, I'll welcome anyone here who's in recovery that's comfortable to come forward and accept this uh, proclamation along with our friends at Stairway to Recovery. Please feel free to come forward and join us. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's great to have all of you here with us today. I'll wait a second so we can all participate here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you being willing to come forward and accept this proclamation today. We're going to have to get a bigger venue next year. <laughs>
Yeah, you can feel, some of you can squeeze right behind me here if we need more room. <laughs> Scoot down, I'm really a nice guy, you can get close. <laughs> Don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> All right, let me issue this proclamation on behalf of the city of Brockton. Whereas behavioral health is an essential part of health and one's overall wellness, and whereas prevention of mental and substance abuse disorders works, treatment is effective, and people recover in our area, our city, and around the country. And whereas preventing and overcoming mental and or substance use disorders is essential to achieving healthy lifestyles, both physically and emotionally. And whereas we must encourage relatives and friends of people with mental and or substance abuse disorders to implement preventative measures, recognize the signs of a problem, and guide those in need to appropriate treatment and recovery support services. And whereas hundreds of thousands of people and families across Massachusetts are affected by these conditions, mm -hmm. and whereas to help more people achieve and sustain long-term recovery, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the White House, and the City of Brockton invite all residents to participate in National Recovery Month. And now therefore I, Bill Carpenter, as Mayor of the City of Brockton, do hereby proclaim September 2017 as National Recovery Month. And I urge, I urge all residents of the City of Brockton to observe this month with appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies joining all of our partners that you see here today to support this year's Recovery Month. And this is signed and sealed by the Mayor of Brockton. And uh, I think for this year, because they've been such great partners to us in the Champion Plan, the folks who are receiving the training, who are out on the front, live, front lines, saving lives every day, uh, I'd like to present this to Stairway to Recovery for them to have to see. Who is that friend? Here we go.